welcome to Power and Performance, brought to you by Morris Lubricants. This is a place where we celebrate the very best of British engineering, and it doesn't get much more British than the Bentley. We're here today in Alex Sharphouse's workshop in what I would describe as the carcass of a Bentley. I'd liken what you're doing to like putting a puzzle together. You've got all these different pieces, you've got to make them fit. So how do you find out how to do that? That's a good question. It is, it is a puzzle and it is really difficult. And one of the hardest things I've found with any of these projects that we've taken on that you don't know about is not knowing and finding out because you can spend so long doing something, you think you've done an amazing job of it. And when you actually realise it's not quite right or it doesn't quite fit, that it's, it's soul destroying really. So as we found with Talisman, it, it was very much, you make something to a drawing, you think you've done it right, come to put it on, you start again. And this is exactly the same. I don't know much about blower Bentleys. Um, when we finished it, it'd be easy to do another one. You'll know you'll be an expert on it, won't you? So it's very much a learning curve. But I think that's maybe part of the challenge. And it, it you know, it, it is a test. It's like doing a puzzle or crossword. It's working it out. And and that these hours have spent working out. Um, in knowing what to do, where to go, um, I'm very fortunate. I've made friends with a guy who's really experienced in this and he's been among Bentleys all his life so he's like a fantastic chap on the end of a phone to ring up Colin's an absolute star um, and there's a couple of um, Bentley restorers in the country that are helpful um, if you speak to them, I've got to know them well um, they offer various parts they have on the shelf but there is an awful lot of bits especially for something like this, like a blow Bentley that's not run of the mill, that he just isn't available so we have to make the bits and pieces and try and either go and look at another car and measure it up or look at photographs. But I have got um, some original drawings, which yeah. which are great. So a lot of time working off those measurements, getting things right. Um, I've got a lot of photographs. And again, um, Colin was very fortunate that when the original car that Tim Birkin drove a number of years ago has changed hands. Um, he was lucky enough to work on it and he photographed the car from That's one amazing. end to the other uh, and he's got pictures of every nut and bolt and piece. Wow. So that is like really the holy grail for me and he very kindly gave me this giant box of photographs that were all in and said, amazing. fill your boots. So I carefully went through them all, got them all copied and I've got them in albums now. So mm -hmm. I've sort of broken them into various um, sections of the car so when you're working on a bit and you're not quite sure what goes where you go back to the photographs and have a look try and scale it off one bit onto another and we just want it to be as absolute near and as, and as correct to the original car if you're going to do it you might as well try and do it properly and it it can be anything from you know a, a nut being on the bottom of a, a bolt or, or it being the other way up it, you know and, and it, how was it on the original ones we just look at the photograph think that, that's how it that's how that was so that's how we'll do it I think that's really interesting, actually, where, you know, the amount of time you spend actually doing compared to the amount of research and mm. also just meeting the right people. How would you say that sort of compares, like, percentage-wise of sort of, you know, I guess the kind of desk work yeah. and the networking and then actually the doing? Probably spend 30 to 40% of the time scratching your head, drinking tea. <laughs> Doesn't sound one, too bad. <laughs> one, <laughs> wondering, um, yeah, like, yeah, researching and trying to find out um, of actually coming, you know, it'd be rare that I actually walk through that door of a, a night thing, I'm going to go and have a couple of hours on my car and walk through and actually do two hours of continuous constructive work. Mm -hmm. There's probably out of that two hours, you probably spend, you know, 40 minutes, um, not just quite and measuring and having, and then trolling back for a picture and finding another one and go, yeah, I think that's right. And then, and then you do it and, and that's where you think. So yeah, that it, it's a big part of, of the a build and, and doing a project like this is getting it right, researching it and, and working it out. And during that research that you've been doing, I'm guessing for quite some time to have already got to this stage, is there anything that you came across that really surprised you? You think you've got a long way when you've got something bolted together and then you start to look at the next section like we're up to now is fitting the engine and the supercharger and getting all that. And to get it all to line up, is more difficult than you think really there's, there's a lot of time and effort in doing that so you almost get you you take a a few steps forward and get to a certain point and then you, you start backtracking then because oh, you understand no. you sort of understand 
where you needed to be. And it's the same thing. If you had the knowledge and you knew, you'd done one before, you yeah. would have never got to that stage. You'd have, you'd have from absolutely from day one. So you sort of, you end up mocking up, building forward, looking at it, right, to do that, I've got to take it back and do that. And then we'll get to a point, it's had a, a coat of paint, just sort of, you know, to stop it going rusty as we're working on and doing. But when we get to a point of we go, oh, that car's nearly there, it'll all have to come to bits again. Everything will have to come off it and then we'll paint it and build it all back up again. So there's a, a lot of forward and backwards with a project like this, really. And during this process, do you keep your own like notes and diagrams and things like that so that, you know, potentially in the future, someone else might start referencing all the things that you've done? Yeah, I do. Um, you know, you do drawings and sketches of various bits and measurements. Um, I probably I'm guilty of not doing enough. I have it all in your head. Um, but I take a lot of photographs. I think that's the easy thing. You know, you take a picture of something and then take it to bits and then put it back together and, and then you compare it again. I find that's very useful. You know, they built these. It just it was a draftsman in a, in a drawing shop. And I think, like, back in those days, a lot of these cars were sort of built with imperfections. You know, maybe actually the doors didn't slightly align and things like that because the nature of it was that potentially you had different people working on the car, so that bloke's way of doing something was different to that bloke's. With if you find things like that, do you want to perfect them, you know, so that everything is, you know, perfect and matching on a car? Yeah, it, it, it's difficult because these cars were built in sheds like we like just like we are yeah, in, yeah. in in a stone shed with you know a, cu a couple of lamps up and 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 that's how they were. They, they weren't they were never absolute perfection. Well, they were handmade. They were handmade yeah. and and, spe and especially. Like the blower Bentley, it was built in quite a short short space of time because they were trying to go out and race. And a, and a lot of the things, when you find, why was it done like this? Why was it done like that? It was what was available. And then you hear stories back that that's all they could get at the time was that particular part. And a lot of parts you see on the chassis, they're all nuts and bolts on them, where if you look at the original built cars that came from Bentley's works originally, they were riveted up. Well, it was half the time because when they were doing these, they hadn't the time or the facilities to rivet them up. Mm -hmm. And because they were changing them all the time, it was easy just to unbolt something and move it around and, and do so. That, it's quite funny, really, that um, we're sort of more or less doing it exactly as it was built in, in a bit of a, an old cow shed and, and working forwards. But we want to try and get it as good as we can get it. And there, there are certain things that we will get better. Certainly the tolerances and the engine, the supercharger and all that side of it, we'll definitely be able to get that better than what the original ones were, mm. um, just purely because we forgot the technology and machining skills now. And back then, they were done in such a rush, they hadn't had the time to trial them, test them, to, to work out what needed to be done. So that's obviously being done, and there's a lot of knowledge out there now of what you need to do and how to do that side of it, which is will come to all, all that. But... You could make it too good. And if you make everything an absolute perfect fit, this chassis will move up and down and the bodies on them are ash framed and covered in a, in a material because they do move. And if you mm. bolt everything down absolutely rigid thing, it will break and crack something. So the, you have to work with it and, and understand what you're trying to do. And, you know, there's certain, certain things you've still got to do the traditional ways or else it won't work. We're also really lucky now that we've got channels such as Power and Performance where we can record the kind of timeline and the storyline of projects like this. Because, you know, when you were growing up and when I was growing up, didn't have anything like that. And so what sort of things do you think people will be able to learn from watching you on this journey? You know, you're just you're rebuilding an engine somewhere and you want to know what the valve timing is or what the setting of the tappets are. You can just go online. There's more or less everything's there available. You just Somebody will have put on... Setting so on on this series of doing this, I think it's important to show about how we're learning going along, and mm. if other people want to watch or doing something similar, they'll gain something from it. And all good stories have a bit of drama, a bit of jeopardy. So you promise to share the highs and lows of how this is going to go. Absolutely, I, I'm very much a believer in it. You know, this is how it really is, and you know, we we don't profess to be experts at doing all these sort of things so it, it's very much a learning curve for us and it's about our journey and, and story and that's where Morris Lubricants are, are on board with us because they're interested in how it works and, and what products work well and don't work well. So we're going to be with you from box of bits to the bitter but triumphant end I'm very sure. Absolutely the whole thing is about the story and it, it's by the idea 
the starting off, what the project is, finding the bits, building it up, trialing it, using it, and then doing something exciting finish to the project. So, And I think much more than just bumbling around the lanes in the Lake District, this is going to be built for being pushed to the limits, isn't Absolutely. it? Absolutely. Everything that we do um, is all about taking it right to the end and proving that it's as good as the day that somebody else had done it that we've based it on. And chucking some Morris Lubricants products in there to see if they uh, stand up to it. That's it, that's it, yeah, no, we'll, it'll be a great test. It's like cutting edge, you know, product and old school design, technology and engineering and just seeing how the two work together. Absolutely, and, it, and it's like, it's the journey as well. We've got the history of what these were before and it's the same with the Morris product, they've been on a journey. They're a fantastic company that was my sort of real interest in them. They're from date back, you know, 150 years ago that they, they were started. And they've moved with the times from steam engines through to the first combustion engines to when these were raced. We've got an original Morris uh, oil chart with a four and a half litre Bentley on telling what oil to put cool. in back in 1930s. So, that, I mean, that really does tie the, you know, the connection together. So their products move with the times and the journey. We're doing this with the time and the journey. So in theory, the products have come on leaps and bounds. Our engineering skills have come on leaps and bounds. Put together, we should have the ultimate product at the end of it. A match made in heaven. Perfect. <laughs> we hope to see a lot more of you guys as we progress on this epic journey on power and performance. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe so you don't miss an episode.